Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen, this is David Benjamin from HealthyWildAndFree.com. Today I want to talk about how to cultivate and create more mindfulness in your life. The definition of mindfulness is to be present, as in in the moment, in the now, as Eckhart Tolle says. Not in the past, not in the future, but simply here in the present, but also to be conscious of being here in the present. To be aware that you're in the present. To be fully engaged with, with whatever it is that you're doing or not doing in this present moment, whether I'm talking to you or not talking to anyone and just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. To be mindful simply means to be engaged 100% with life. And I've found personally that my relationships, uh, my career, my opportunities, my level of happiness, how harmonious and at peace I feel in my life are all upgraded when I'm acting and being in a state of mindfulness. So the goal or the idea is to simply be conscious and present in the moment. Now, before I get into the happy, inspiring, positive, encouraging content that I'm really excited to share with you, I want to take a deep dive into the dark side of mindfulness and into the dark side of what's stopping or hindering you from being mindful. Now, Everyone's going to talk about the upsides of being mindful, and, and I kind of did already, but I want to take you back. So we live either in the past, present, or future, right? I think we can all agree on that. We live in the past, present, or future at any given time. Sometimes we're in the present now, sometimes we're in the past, sometimes we're in the future. It just depends. Now, one thing that I've learned in my life that I, would, I feel like is super valuable to learn and understand is that when we are triggered, which could be by specific people, specific events and or scenarios or environments, whatever it is, when we are triggered, that offers us valuable insight. The word insight is literally in, as in inward, and then sight as in vision, insight, as to what and why we are triggered. So what it is, is, you know, whatever the event or person or whatever is, but why the more, the deeper underlying cause is, oh, I felt abandoned, or I felt resented, or I felt, um, I felt I was lied to, so I, it created bitterness or anger in me, or whatever it was. So it's really important to go to see your past, and to see your trauma, and to see your pain, and be able to unearth these things in your life, so that you can consciously create a paradigm shift, and create what's called upwiring in your brain. So the brain uh, our, bla our brains are, have what's known as neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity simply means that the neural pathways in our brain change, evolve, and progress over time. So if you've had a past experience that caused you to feel a certain kind of way, and that experience happens again and again in life, and you always get triggered by it, you always get angry, you always get upset, you always get frustrated, that will steal, rob, and completely take away the opportunity for you to even be remotely mindful because you're allowing your emotions to control you as opposed to you controlling your emotions. So it's really important to understand your past, your history, your traumas, your pain, all of that. Because in all of those experiences, there's plenty of wisdom, beauty, truth, knowledge, and potential for your life to grow, progress, heal, and thrive. So. First things first is understanding your past and just understanding in general what triggers you and why does it trigger you because that is robbing your mindfulness because if you're living out of an emotional reactive state in your life, you're not responding, you're reacting and when you respond to life, you show up more mindfully. When you react, you don't show up mindfully at all. So that's the first thing. The second thing is to learn to practice yoga, meditation or breath work. Yoga meditation and breath work all carry a very similar premise. That premise is that you have to be in the moment in the now because if you're doing a specific pose, you have to be focused, which is concentration, and present in the moment to accomplish that task. So yoga is great at training that. Meditation is great because it really messes with your mind. Your mind will wander. You'll have all these thoughts. Oh, I got to do this later. I got to go here. I got to be there. And you'll have all this resistance come up to just sitting there and being silent and being still and going inward. So meditation is a great tool and practice as well to create conscious presence in the moment, which is mindfulness. Breathwork does too. Breathwork is amazing. I love breathwork so much. Breathwork is incredible because what it does is it entrains our body and our being and our brain 
to be conscious and to be present and to also take a step back and to rewire our brain to be in the rest, relax, and digest state as opposed to fight or flight. So as opposed to being in the sympathetic nervous system, which is fight or flight, we're in the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the relaxed state, which allows us the time and space to even be mindful. You need time and space to be mindful. So breath work is incredible. Meditation, yoga, those are all incredible practices to in, instill mindfulness into your life. Last but not least, any new skill that you develop uh, is going to help you to become more mindful. Years ago, probably about like seven years ago, I learned how to juggle. And it's fairly easy for me now, so I honestly am not that mindful when I juggle because it's something that I've trained my mind and body to practice and to be proficient in. But training your body and training your mind in a new skill is valuable because the two aspects of mindfulness, which is being conscious and being present in the moment, you need to engage in order to learn that new skill. So whether it's something like swimming or riding a bike or learning a new instrument or juggling or whatever it is, painting, drawing, whatever it is, that new skill takes the two aspects of mindfulness, being conscious and being in the present moment, and it forces you, it literally forces your brain, it creates what's known as upwiring in the brain. So neuroplasticity states that there are new neural pathways created over time, uh, and your environment and your habits are what cultivate this, this, uh, this change in your neuroplasticity. If you want to upwire your brain, meaning, in other words, to upregulate the capacity and potential of your brain to be mindful, learning a new skill causes you to enact those two uh, recipe or those two ingredients for the recipe of mindfulness. I guess that's the best way to put it. So if you want to be more mindful, simply find out what triggers you, unearth your pain, unearth your trauma, and deal with it. It is worth it. It is worth unearthing your pain. It is worth uprooting and healing. It is worth forgiving. It is worth letting go. It is worth doing the work. Because when you do the work, you get the benefit of that work. You get the value of that work. And if you want to receive the benefits that mindfulness has to offer your life, which there are many, you need to do the work. So find out what triggers you, find out what causes you to emotionally react and respond, as opposed to take a step back and say, hey, I can breathe through anything that anyone throws at me because I know that their words, their energy, their anger, their emotions, whatever it is, that's an expression of them. It's not necessarily, necessarily a reflection of me. It's a reflection of them. And I just happen to be in their crossfire. So understand that. Practice yoga, meditation, breath work, because these three practices allow you to be conscious and in the present moment. Last but not least, learn a new skill. Learn how to juggle. Juggling is amazing. I highly recommend it. Juggling helps connect the left-right hemisphere of your brain, the left analytical hemisphere of your brain, the right uh, uh, creative hemisphere of your brain. It helps to connect those so that your brain uh, fires and it synergistically communicates and coherently utilizes the capacity of the analytical and creative brain together so that you have more whole brain balance and whole brain power and potential to be mindful. So I'm going to leave you with this. Mindfulness is a practice. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. It takes intention, attention, and energy, but it's an investment that's worth it. So even if you take five minutes a day to just simply sit, meditate, breathe, and do nothing, that's mindfulness and congratulations. I honor you for taking that step. Do whatever you can, start where you're at, progress and evolve from there, and you will find that it adds a lot of value to your life, and it's totally worth the journey. Thank you so much for your time. My name is David Benjamin from HealthyWildAndFree.com. You can like, subscribe, favorite, comment, and share this video below. Make sure to hit the bell for notification for future videos. Last but not least, I wrote a report called Your Supplements Suck. It's a 33-page educational PDF on supplement quality and what you should avoid and what you need to understand in purchasing supplements to make wiser purchasing decisions to invest in your health more proficiently. Thank you for your time. I'll see you in the next video.